me? But you might still go through the motions. But so your body is going through the motions, but you, mentally, emotionally, you know what I mean? You're kind of just pulling all the way back. You know what I mean? So when it does happen, you're kind of mentally and emotionally prepared. Right. But for guys, you know, when divorce hits, it hits hard. Women, especially talking about relationships, it takes them a while to build up some type of feeling for something. Like if they feel a disconnect, it takes a while for them to feel that disconnect. They're usually willing to give chances more and forgive more, you know, understand more. Us, if something happened to us, like say you're talking about cheating. If somebody cheat on, on a woman, she's more likely to forgive, forgive that person. But if let a woman cheat on a man, they're like, oh, it's over. I'm out. Da, da, da. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that I think that's why. I think, like you said, I think w- women in your mind, there's a lot that happens in your mind. So I think you, you're planning things. You know what I mean? So, uh, for instance, I was talk, talking to this young lady. She's going through a lot. And she's only like 15, 16, or so, uh, 17, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And she likes this boy. So in her mind, she's planning everything for this young man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I really like you. You're, you're going to be my boyfriend. You know, we're going to hold hands. We're going to do this. And the boy is just in the moment. You know what I mean? And I think that's what happens with men. Right? right? So we're not planning everything out. We're just in the moment, you know what I mean? So we didn't plan for a divorce, you know what I mean? So even if it's going horrible, sometimes a lot of men would just kind of just grin and bear it. They might even be with another woman or something like that. But you know what I mean? If they made that decision, they kind of stick with it. So emotionally, when it happens, it's, it's a devastating because we, for a lot of men, uh, marriage is, I guess, the final destination of one's, you know, uh, li- not life, but, you know what I mean, of, of being with somebody. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, you know, that's a tough uh, pill to swallow. Yeah. 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 Yep. So how are you coping? How are you swallowing that pill? Pause. Pa- pause. 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 <laughs> Pause. You, got, you, got to start, you got to start this whole thing over. <laughs> yeah, pause that. Oh, Sis. All right, edit. Wow. That's, that's not it. I was going with his verbiage. That is not it. Okay. No, no, no. How are you coping? That is not it. How are you? <laughs> yeah, you should have just stopped right there. How am I coping? Welcome, everybody. Yes. Uh, Al Hardy to the show. Um, Lord. <laughs> this okay. is Couples Connect, and we are talking with Al Hardy. <laughs> about um, his experience uh, with, with marriage and with um, also with going through some tough times that led to uh, a divorce uh, in his marriage and then going back out into the, you know, the, the single arena and uh, what that's like and what his experience is like trying to get back into to relationships and dating and everything. So yeah. I think the question was, um, <laughs> we, stated, we stated for my wife and my lovely wife, my assistant here, yes. um, how, how did you cope with um, dealing with, um, I guess, you know, with, with the dynamic change in the marriage and, and then also mm-hmm. that leading to the, the um, they're saying that I want a divorce, so I want to be separated. Uh, so I, it was it was tough. Like like I said before, it it was tough. Um, I think we at that time we exhausted all of our options from from a spiritual perspective. Church, um, and I think we were just in different spaces. So um, church, and then going in counseling, therapy, um, and I just think that we were just like it. It, it was always a matter of uh, when she wanted to work things out. I was finished, you know what I mean. Same, vice versa, you know what I mean. But now we're at a uh, we're at a healthy and whole space, you know, co-parenting. But when we when we talk about uh, just the process of of the divorce, um, the process, like you know, the legal process wasn't that difficult. The the difficult process for me was the emotional, you know what I mean, because we had uh, children invested, we had family members invested. Um, and that was a difficult process, you know, uh, to 
uh, untangle the entanglements, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so uh, or detangle, right? So I think those were the things that uh, that was that was tough, you know what I mean? It took me it took me some time to uh, to understand who I was, like or re-engage who I was, because you know for so long, you know, you're thinking about being a husband, and being a husband is a selfless. Uh, being married is a selfless act. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the, you know, Bible says the two become one. Um, but then, you know, what happens when the two, you know what I mean, break up? You know what I mean? And they be, they come and they really become one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Back to who they, to themselves, right? So that's uh, that's 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 a tough process, right? So um, I would say. I went from being selfless to, to taking care of more of myself. So self care. So, and part of my self care was uh, getting around other brothers, strong spiritual brothers to, in the, in the, in the midst of, of the divorce in the midst of, you know, being sing single, who's able to hold you accountable um, to who you are, to what it is that you say you're going to do. Um, but they also pray with you, right? Just like, you know, uh, sometimes you might not have the words or the, uh, you know, express, have the emotion to express how you really feel. You have brothers who can really uh, talk to you and, um, and pray with you, right? I think that's key. I think that's key for every man, you know what I mean? Single and married. Um, the other part is I went to therapy. Therapy was very therapeutic, <laughs> you know what I mean? And in that, though, I was able to become more self-aware of who, who it is that I was, um, things that I wanted to do, get back to the basics of, you know, understanding your purpose. And um, when, when I say purpose, understanding why I believe or why God created me, you know what I mean? and get more in, in alignment with that, you know what I mean? And it's still tough because, you know, when you're, you, you're known as a husband, right? So your, your, your children see, see something, uh, see you as a husband, as a father, your ex-wife sees you as a, as a husband, your family sees you as a family man, and then you become single. I, w I was blessed to have great family that supported me in the midst of, of that right um i think that goes understated um having a strong uh not just good friend group but also family you know what i mean um so i i, I was blessed to have that and i understand especially in the african black in the black community that's not too a lot of people aren't as fortunate to sit, your parents can just say come on come back come back to the crib get yourself together and reset yourself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times in our community, we toss our kids out. We just say, you know what, um, you're, you're 18. You, uh -huh. you, you, mm -hmm. uh -huh, you, you're getting out this house. And I think that's something that we have to really uh, reconsider, reevaluate how, how we treat our family, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the, the, the other part of that is, is that, um, if you love your kids, sometimes it's difficult for for them to go. You know what I mean? Um, you know, like if you train them, you know, and and it, every kid has a different personality. But you know, but even when we look at the prodigal son, you know what I mean? His son lit, went off and had a right, lived a riotous life, but his father still welcomed him back into the crib. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so. I think, you know, so those are things that I, that I kind of like see um, that I've kind of went through um, in the midst of, of, you know, being in the divorce process. Yeah. I think there was something that you said that um, I wanted to point out and maybe talk about a little bit more. I think that um, one of the things that people aren't prepared for when they're going through a divorce is uh, the divorcing of other family. Mm -hmm. right? And so sometimes, a lot of the times when you go through a divorce, those other people from your spouse's side of the family that you were connected with, that you were, mm -hmm. um, I was going to say entangled, but I don't know. <laughs> 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 but those other people 
um, there's a separation that sometimes happens, even with like friend groups and yeah. couples that mm-hmm. you hang out with and stuff. And I think that so a lot it's of not people just are a, not. It's not just a separation from your spouse, right. but also these other people in that family group that you've been connected to and built relationship and history with. Mm-hmm. So it's so, it's a lot to take on. Yeah. 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 How was that? Yeah. You? Was that challenging? Or um, that was a division for you, but... Yeah, it, it it was, but I think my my personality is that I'm a people person, so I was able to. It was tough to disconnect for, from certain people, um, especially the people who were who were invested, right? Um, you know, who was invested not just in me, but in my ex wife, and not just in my ex wife, but in, in me, right? And you know, sometimes those are still tough conversations. Like for instance, if you you have a good friend who you feel like they support and like uh, let's let's go something to something light and 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 it could be petty but <laughs> let's just say let's just say you have a, a good friend liking your ex's pictures right you could get you could get offended it's, you know what I mean? we doing it's right? true yeah <laughs> you know what like, I mean? you like that many right like, team al or other like, team <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah. so 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 that you know, so that mindset, you know what I mean? You have to kind of disconnect yourself from that type of mindset. You know what I mean? Because we have to realize that, you know, because at that point in time, you're upset, you're frustrated, you're you're angry, you're hurt. So you're like, you know, you're my friend. You know what I mean? We become, sometimes we become possessive. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and sometimes that kind of built a wedge in, in some of the friendships. And I had to like really take that time you know, I had to ask for forgiveness for, from them also, you know, on the way that I treated them because, you know, they're supposed to be, you know, they're supposed to love all parties, you know what I mean? Right. Um, right. So, but sometimes you have to get, get that space and you have to reintroduce yourself, not just to yourself, but it's a good time to, to meet other people because you what, what happens is you have to realize that this is a different season in your life, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. when you understand that this is a different season in your life, everybody's not going to be in that, you know, in that, in that season. You know what I mean? So when you start understanding that, it really helps to uh, see things in a different perspective, especially with your friends and even with your family members. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Very true. So you, you talked about, you know, being, um, having this, uh, this support group and being in the church and just mm-hmm. having accountability. Did you... Did you feel at any point of the divorce process that you were like judged by other people or even like people in, in the church, you know, being that you were his husband and now you, you weren't? Um, I think the biggest judge, judge and critic was probably, probably and still might be is myself um, because um, and the truth of the matter is, is that as a man, uh, it's tough on women, you know what I mean? Um, when you look at divorces, you know what I mean? A lot of times, and, and I can say this for my ex-wife, you know, she's, t- she's taken on a, the, the brunt of the rearing even for, for my children, you know what I mean? So um, that could be tough, you know what I mean? So. Um, so with, with that being said, you know, for a woman, uh, if you're taking on, you know, the, the rearing, the day to day sometimes for some, for some, uh, for some women, um, and then you, you take it on the, uh, the judgment or the, 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 the being critical of what happened, you know what I mean? What happened? People wanting to know what happened. You know, you, you were married. Sometimes it can be difficult uh, for, for, for women. So, and I don't fully understand that aspect. But for me, um, like I said, it was me, you know what I mean, being raised uh, by uh, my, my parents are very uh, community, family oriented. My, my, as of now, my parents have been married for 41 years. Um, they're, they're my father, he's, he, at that time, he was an elder in the church. He's an executive pastor now, like an assistant pastor. My mom, she's a therapist. She's a, uh, so when you look at, and, and like the titles, right. And you, but you look at what they've done 
um, experientially, like, you know, you see that they've accomplished some things. And the the judgment for me or the criti- the criticism is really self. Like, I was supposed to be able to have a long-term marriage. You know what I mean? I was supposed to be able to take on the, the, the next step of what it is that my parents are doing. And I still believe that I am, but it's just not in the way that I thought. And now I have to really, now that makes me tap into what God wants out of me. You know what I mean? Even the more. And for me to reevaluate my gifts, my talents, and seeing me, me as I, as I truly am. So now if somebody was to look at me with judgment or, or, or to be critical, I think the more self-aware I am, the more able, I'm not able to, it doesn't affect me the way it did. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But in a divorce, you know, you're broken because you're broken up. You know what I mean? So it, it, it takes time to heal. And, and so I think, you know, you have to go through that, that whole process. Yeah. And I think too, like out of, even though it, it was, you know, it was a tough situation and not a situation that either one of you wanted to, to be in, but it seems like in that time you were able to now look at what did God have for you. And maybe you weren't in that position when, when, you know, when you were married and trying to live the life of your parents, like you wasn't really clear on where you should be as, yeah. at, you know, and now you put in yeah. a broken place where you're like, you're lost, you know what I mean? And the only way that you can find yourself is, is through God, you know, and have him lead you where he wanted you to go, you know, all along. So. I think, I think too, the other part is, is that there were some things that I missed mm-hmm. out on and as it pertains to, uh, to, to training. And, not, and my, like I said, my parents are excellent parents, mm-hmm. but I, I missed out on, and I, I was really thinking about this today. Um, dealing with this young lady um, is that uh, not just understanding women, because sometimes we can understand, like you can understand people in theory, but not, you know what I mean, in behavior and in action, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we don't fully understand people is because we're not around people enough, you know what I mean? Because it's different between like I said, the theory of, of something and then the actual uh, living things out, you know what I mean? And so I, I say that to say that, you know, though um, I had a basic understanding of things, uh, when you're living with a woman and you haven't really, I, me personally, um, I went to all boys school, I um, played basketball, so I dealt with men basically i had a barber shop you know what i mean so all men basically all the time so now you know so now my approach to my wife was uh more how i would approach men as opposed to understanding that you know you're a woman you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i would be kind of rough you know what i mean sometimes or um, yeah, i i could say that kind of rigid you know what I mean? And my approach. And, not, and when I say that, like, you know, not how understanding how to hold hands and, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Things like that, mm-hmm. you know? So I didn't fully understand that, you know what I mean? So, you know, so those are things that I had to learn, you know, but I think that if I would would, would have had, and, and, and this is something that I learned coming out of a divorce was I started to hang around like my female cousins. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Female friends. I started to have solid female friends. And it was, you know, eye opening just to understand uh, women's perspectives and understanding who they are. So now that even gives me better perspective as a father, but even as a co parent. You know what I mean? So when my ex wife says something, I'm not taking it in a, cer- in a certain type of way. You know what I mean? I'm understanding like this just might be. Uh, a time where she's just she has to express herself you know what I mean in a way just just to get things off her chest you know what I mean mm-hmm. so these are things that I've I had to learn yeah I know that um the the scripture in the bible it says for the wives to submit to their husbands mm-hmm. but it also says for the husbands to uh, love and to deal with their wives with understanding mm-hmm. and, and I always like um that resonates a lot because I think sometimes women can feel very misunderstood. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and so I think it's not by chance that the word of God says to handle them with understanding. And it's more than, like you said, just theory, you know, <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's yeah. really that particular individual mm -hmm. um, seeking to be in a place of understanding the why or like, you know, mm -hmm. how they're thinking and mm -hmm. how they're processing stuff. And, and not even like, just under, not even understanding women, you know, and, and learning um, the, the true, um, you know, emotion of a woman or, or what women are looking for, but you are particular and specific life. That particular person. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> because even though there might be some traits that might be similar, like every person is different and yeah. you have to learn your wife. You have to learn your husband. And even in that time that you're married, you're still developing and growing. So you have to continue to learn them and continue mm -hmm. to understand them. So yeah, that, and, that's powerful. Yeah, and when you talk about uh, like submitting, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I think every man needs to have a vision and I think every man needs to have a mission. So, uh, so you know, so I, I I'm 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 about to drop a book too, so this is oh, kind of going. In. Okay. This, this is kind of this is trying. To, yeah, this is kind of going into that, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and I, and I say that right because uh, you know, vision is really having insight, seeing the 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 place that you want to go, seeing the destination. Like for instance, you know, you lived in one state and you went and you had a vision, you know, to go to another state. You know what I mean? You know, he said, leave thy father, uh, thy father's house. Like, uh, I think that's in Genesis, you know, go to a land that I'll show thee. And the, the, and he talks about the wealth. And I believe that's uh, Genesis 12. Um, when he was talking to, uh, uh, was that Abraham? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, but he had a vision, you know what I mean? Uh, God gave him a vision. So I think, you know, we have, as men, we have to have a vision, right? But in the midst of that, you know, we have to understand why we was created to fulfill that vision, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's where our purpose comes into play. And so you have to understand what you was created to do. And then in the midst of that, there is a mission. Each and every step of the way, there's a mission, right? And sometimes, because I'm coming to your point, um, when we talk about submitting, you, you have to ha a man has to have a mission. He has to have... Uh, 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 and I think we should be writing our mission out, right? We should have a mission statement for our life. You know what I mean? So, so we're clear. You know what I mean? The clearer we are, the clearer it is for our family. <laughs> you know what I mean? So now, so now, because we have a clear mission, now it's easier for our children, our wives, everybody to understand what it is that we're going to submit under. You know what I mean? Because God gave us a mission. You know what I mean? Personally, he gave me a mission. You know what I mean? But then there should be a mission for our family. Um, then in the midst of that, because we talk about when you talk about understanding, right? Um, I mean, and when we look at submission, it really means to, to come under one's mission, right? Mm -hmm. um, but understanding, um, there's an acronym that I have for trust and that I had to work through the first T is, is, is being thankful. When I, like one of the, the, the struggles I had was when I walked into the, to the crib, uh, sometimes, you know, at the, at that point in time, my ex-wife, she didn't, um, she didn't work. So we had children, you know what I mean? So we made a decision for her to stay home with the kids. But so she, uh, there's a lot going on and, and, and when I get in the house, I'm like, you, you, you know, I felt like I should have been the king of the castle. And she was like, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's happening. Uh -huh. I don't have time for that. You know what I mean? And there was a conflict. and But we wasn't thankful to see each other. You know what I mean? So there should be some thankfulness when we're engaging. You know what I mean? Like, so if I see you, I'm thankful. I'm appreciative you know, for, for who you are. Um, you know, so when I just say thank you, that's really showing appreciation. And when we look at appreciation, that word, you know what I mean? That's a, a, a financial word. That means your value goes up. So because somebody is in your life, when you look at your wife, when you look at your husband, you're thankful. That means that you're valued, right? Yeah. You know, they talk about Black Lives Matter, you know what I mean? But a, a simple thank you is just saying I appreciate you. 
and that means that your value so you you have value in each other's life the r stands for reliability um when we we look at r um when we look at being reliable that means that's a consistency you know what i mean um the 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 the, the de definition also means to grasp so it, it so being reliable is being tight being consistent um and what it is that you're doing right um so if we're going to have trust you have to be thankful for that person you have to be a reliable person and then the you comes to your point is the understanding you know what i mean and the and the way i kind of i kind of uh talk about it is is what is it that you're standing under so and when you when we're talking about what is it that you're standing under meaning the knowledge base right so be, because um you might have some information and you might have some information but now understanding means we're bringing that in information together mm -hmm. and now we're coming to a, a point of 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 completeness or uh of, of of understanding right you know what i mean the two shall become one you know what i mean so you know so your knowledge my knowledge it becomes one so we understanding the s uh, and, and this is a, a a part that uh a lot of men resonates with a lot of men is safety you know what i mean um and women you know in, in this in this era we we're talking about protecting women and uh you know and and what 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 i'm hearing is that women don't feel safe they don't feel emotionally safe but the question the the the, the other part is is for do men feel emotionally safe too we're, so in in our communities there's not too much safety that's that 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 takes place we're not really uh we and there's a difference between protecting and safety. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My presence can protect you, but do you still feel safe? You know what I mean? So uh, we have to feel safe around each other for, for trust to, to last. And then, and then the T is for transparency. I think all of that leads up to transparency. When you have, when you're thankful for somebody, when you have, when you have a reliable person, and then when you have that understanding, that's definitely big. And then you have that safety. Now transparency comes into comes into play, and now we can build the trust that that really that really needs to set into our families, into our relationships, and into our hearts. So you know, so that's kind of my <laughs> you know yeah. my yeah. my whole trust. Man, listen, Dropping if if, if that's just one there. part of the book, then like. <laughs> I can't imagine what the rest of it is going to be like. So I, I love the acronym that you give because each, each one leads to the next. And yeah. then once, once you get through safety, you go through, you know, being truthful, reliable, understanding safety, and then you get to a point of transparency. And like you said, that opens up to um, provide more truth to, to open yeah. up to, to be more transparent. And I think it kind of recycles all over again, and it just continues, you know, you, you become more reliable, you become, you have more understanding, you feel even safer, and then you become yeah. more transparent, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so, I mean, but, you know, the, the, the interesting part is, is that, you know, through, I, I learned all of this through going through, through the experience, you know what I mean? Through yeah. going through relationships, you know what I mean? And, and and being heartbroken too you know what i mean mm -hmm. um to and, and it really had to i really had to reflect i had really had to pray to understand like you know how can one how does one trust get broken you know what i mean you know and a lot of times it's not being truthful like you said you know when somebody and, and it really it's the transparency like you know what i mean transparency does like you said lead to truth so when somebody lies, that means that the the trust is broken. Yep. You know what I mean. So how do we get to somebody wanting to to tell the truth? You know what I mean. For them to take that guard down. So this is kind of what led me to that. You know what I mean. Yeah. To understand, like you know, when I see somebody, I have to acknowledge them, and that's the issue that we have in our community is mm -hmm. that 
the police don't even acknowledge us. That's, they, they're not even at the first tee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what yep. I mean? Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's so true. It, it makes me, um, so I want to ask you a question mm-hmm. because I think I love the acronym. And, mm-hmm. um, and this is really for, I guess, advice for married couples, mm-hmm. right? Because okay. now you've been um, through um, a marriage and been able to reflect. And I think that the therapy and prayer and all those things has really kind of um, given you revelation. Mm-hmm. And, and so my question is, as far as advice, how would you suggest that a couple move in these spaces? Mm-hmm. Like, um, I guess like tangible. How do, you, how do you get to a place where you can become truthful? Right, where you can be. How do you get with, to with it? How do, you, how do they get to the place where they're comfortable to start? Just, or just how, how do you start it? Like, right. Like what advice okay. would you give, basically? Based I mean, on the acronym, what advice would you give? First thing is, is is being grateful. I think that's 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 the first part. Like you know, uh, I think I think the whole acronym walks you through that process. Like being grateful um, and saying it. Like being able to say, like you know what, I, I appreciate you. Mm-hmm. I thank thank you. I think a lot of times, like for instance, like we have so much that's going on in our mind and throughout the day that we're not grateful for the people that we live with or that we see every day. So I think that's the first thing, you know what I mean? Um, I have a podcast also, and one of the things that he, sh- one of the well, a therapist that shared was uh, a tip that couples should do. And I, I, I should, he said, when you first come home for the first 10 minutes, you should talk about your day. You know what I mean? Um, shit, like really, just 10 minutes, you know what I mean? Where you're just kind of just talking about your day. Um, I think that's key. I think that's key. Mm-hmm. Um, the other part is is showing up, like making an effort to show up. I think um, I think that's key also, like, you know, um, but it also has to be acknowledged that you're showing up, you know what I mean? Because you don't want, and that goes back to being thankful, like, you know, you don't want, somebody always show up for you yeah. and then you know they're not they don't feel valued about about it like for instance i had a friend who uh got she, she got sick and um i went to the hospital um and then uh i wasn't i didn't feel like you know i felt at, you know at the end of our relationship like that's something that i thought about I, I thought about how many times i showed up for this person and when it was my turn, you just let, left me hanging. You know what I mean? So I think that reliability is key too. Like for instance, if there's a celebration, um, if there's something that's going on, um, like I think cel- celebrating each other is very important. You know what I mean? Like for instance, you could celebrate the small wins and you could celebrate the big wins, but you have to celebrate each other. And that mean, and part of that is showing up for each other. You know what I mean? Um, when fam- something happens with family, showing up for each other, um, showing up for when when it like like for 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 women, you know, because you know, from what it is that I've seen, um, they take on the load of the family, you know, of the of the burden. So, one thing that I would would do is now. As I as I've grown, is showing up. You know what I mean for my family's family. You know what I mean for my 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 wife or you know whoever for their family. You know what I mean. Being I think that I think that's I think those are some some things that I would do. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean I think those are good starting points mm-hmm. <laughs> for mm-hmm. for people. I think the the showing up is a big key because. You know, sometimes we get into this assumption mode and and we assume that our spouse knows how much we love them, how much we appreciate Mm -hmm. them and Mm -hmm. that we're thankful for them. And we never verbalize it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think having the conversation because hearing it like, you know, the Bible talks about how words have power. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Power of life and death, you know, is in the tongue Mm -hmm. and hearing it from your spouse can bring life to 
their situation can bring life to your relationship. So yeah. that's showing up is is so important. Yeah, and 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 I think too, like say, like for me, I'm so fortunate because, like for instance, my going to basketball games and like mm-hmm. my parents been they they they're at the, the things that was important to me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so what I had to realize was everybody didn't have that, right? So so now I would just do what it is that I was taught as a sport as 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 opposed to teaching people uh like this is how I do things you know what I mean this or this is what I need you know you know when I do something for you I would like for you to say thank you you know what I mean yeah. if you do something for me I'm going to say thank you cuz that matters to me you know what I mean yeah. if there's something that's happening in my life a lot of times we have expectations because, based on our world view you know so uh so now I expect some, I expect you to be me as opposed to, you know, learning you and saying this is what I need and what is it that you need. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think those conversations are very important. Communicating how you want to be loved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. yeah go, that goes back to the understanding part. But the, um, another question that I thought about that you mm-hmm. mentioned was we were talking about safety mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. how like in the African-American community that it's not like a given, like as far as like men being able to be emotionally safe and then women feeling safe. Um, I just wanted to talk about that a little more because mm-hmm. I think that's very true. And the difference between like protection and safety. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think, I think, as men, we, we, we think because we're present, you know, our, our, our wives or our, our ladies feel safe. You know what I mean? They just feel protected. <laughs> you know what I mean? They feel your presence. You know what I mean? And that means something. Don't, like, let's not get that wrong. You know what I mean? That means something. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, there are some women who, who never had that, 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 that presence and that protection, and they shy away from it. But there is a difference between being protected and being safe. You know what I mean? Um, and we, I think we, you have to understand what safety means for each individual. You know what I mean? What does it mean mentally, emotionally, um, and just being protected, you know? Um, so I think those are just different conversations. Um, I think when we talk about protecting women, we, you know, I, we, I think the conversation should be do we we don't feel safe, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when women say, you know, we we don't feel because we could say, you know what, I speak up for you. Sometimes that's what's needed, you know. Um, but or I'm there, you know what I mean? I you know be, I might pay, <laughs> so you know what I mean? You know to have a roof over your head, you know what I mean? But that's protection. You know, but safety is a different level of emotions that has to go into it. So, you know, so I think we have to really look at it and then vice versa with men. I think we have to understand, women have to understand what does safety look like for men? Because sometimes men could go years or a lifetime living with a woman and not feeling safe. You know what I mean? So they'll tell you what you want to hear, but not really what's on their heart. You know what I mean? So I think th- those are things that That's we don't really we, we don't really talk about. Yep. You know what I mean? And women, some women just don't know. You know yep. what I mean? So I think we have to build spaces of safety. Um, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. So I think you know we have to have counsel. Um, one thing that I think, from a spiritual perspective, uh, um, I think women and men have to do is uh, pray for one another more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I think because the Bible talks about prayer being a covering, you know what I mean? Or or a fence of protection. Um, So there there needs to be more prayer, you know what I mean? But in in, in couples' lives, I think there's an intimacy of of safetyness when we pray for one another. Um, And then love, the Bible says love covers all, you know what I mean? So there has to be some uh, 
I, and I know for some people there's some conditions on love, but as we're working through understanding love, our love languages, love just in general, the, the agape type of love, um, I think, you know, there is safety in love, you know what I mean? And and not being non judgmental. Um so so those are the things that we have to kind of look at when we look at safety. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a book right there. Yeah, that's your next one. <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on. Because I mean, like, like you said, the 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 perception is is when you talk about safety that it it means protection, and that it only pertains to women. You know, yeah. I, mean? I think the whole discussion about men feeling safe is like un you know untapped territory. Yeah, and it it might be taboo to some people because we've been so conditioned to feel a certain way to you know hold ourselves a certain way and never show emotion never you know you know express ourselves or anything like that like you said some people will live their entire life and never have felt safe around their their spouse so that yeah. i think is, is necessary to to just like free a lot of people so can we just know? share really quickly for those listening what yeah. safety mm -hmm. looks like for a man Okay, you, you want me to answer? You want to keep it? Both of y'all can. <laughs> look, look, I'm just learning about this today. What? Back, look out! Look, you I don't back out. I don't. I don't feel safe right now. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you my um, perspective from a woman, but I think people need to hear a man's perspective. Mm -hmm. I think. I think. I think when when a man number one when he opens up his heart there, there's there's moments right there's a mo there's there's moments where a man will share not not just that's why i think uh what we talked about is the practice of talking about your day mm. you know what i mean that leads to both parties being feel, feeling safe right so i think um there are moments when men will let their guard down and it's and sometimes you have to like a, a woman has to or you have to be uh you have to look at his body language you know what i mean it's it's it's, it's in, in his eyes it's in his the way he carries himself he lets his guard down you know what i mean because we're taught to have our guard up you know what i mean we're taught to say like to to feel like you know protective of of our of our not not just our emotions, but our thoughts, right? So, um, and it's not just laughing, right? Because men, we can laugh, you know what I mean. And it's not just crying. There's there's something that when he tells you something that was deep inside of him, there's a a quietness, you know what I mean, a calmness that he he's going to speak with, you know what I mean. Um, he's going to sh and, and when he shares something, I think. That's when you know you have safety with with a man. Would would, would you agree, Akita? Yeah, I, I agree. And I would just to add to that too. I I think mm -hmm. what would what would probably continue that um, that feeling of safety and that transparency and openness is is more so how you respond to what was said or respond to the the husband or the man opening up to 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 his spouse. Okay. Yeah, and, and this is the this is the deal. I think what opens that man's up, that man up, is is giving him the space to kind of give him the space and the time to kind of articulate his thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you know, statistically, women think quicker; they use more words. So, and so, with that being said, you know, um, like I, like for instance, when I was thinking about this young lady um she was planning everything for this young guy and he was just in the moment so if we're in the moment we're not really feeling we're, we're living in the moment moment by moment you know what i mean so if we have that time to be reflective we need sometimes sometimes what 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 happens is if you ask us a, a question like this this is this is what i would say ask a man a question and then give them time to think about it. And it's like a reflective question. Give them time to think about it. Then like either he's going to come back or you come back to him. Mm -hmm. And then you can start building that rapport. 
Yeah. Does, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think too, um, you know, just that, like you said, allowing him to, to express himself and, and not coming back with like, you know, judgmental comments or making him feel worse about, you know, opening himself up to, to you, but being understanding and being empathetic, you know what I mean? And, and supportive. I think those things will, you know, they're allowed it to be a stronger uh, bond between the two of us. Or the two of yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and so, and, and in the black families, you know, a lot of black men, they've been raised by, by women in the home, right? And so I think we also need safe spaces with, with other men so we can learn how to articulate ourselves, not just with men, but outside of women, you know what I mean? But we have to learn how to articulate ourselves with women also, right? So we have to be able to, to have that duality, you know what I mean, where we can share what's on our heart with other men to help us, to give us perspective, right? Um, especially if you have good, you know, you have to pick good spiritual, emotional people who, with wives, you know, men who could kind of give you that type of reflective type of thought. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you start building that around you, that's when you can start building that safety for, 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 for us men. That accountability piece is so important, you know, just Mm -hmm. in life in general, even if you're not in a relationship to have somebody there that is kind of helping guide you and coach you. And like, even what you do, you know, with, with other young men and and women, just Mm -hmm. kind of guiding and helping them to see um, life through a different pair of lenses. It's, it's so key to the development of the person themselves, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Definitely. 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 Um, I'll just add the my little safety perspective real mm-hmm. quick. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it definitely um having been raised by a single mom and then a lot of women in the African American community being single parents, I think that you know, we have a in us like a survivor type of uh personality. So we're mm-hmm. we can get stuff done. You know what I mean? We can figure mm. certain things out. But I think that that understanding piece, like when that, when you're able, when you feel really understood, and I guess that you can be who you are um, and, and your spouse understands you, I think it, it feels like a safety net. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It feels like, I think that that's where you find, or as, as one, I'll speak for myself, that's where you can find that place of feeling safe because it's like, he got me, he know me, he understands, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's not so much like, I think it, it is, I think sometimes men think it is the protection. Like mm-hmm. I'm doing this, I'm providing that. But a lot of, a lot of women, especially now with the way that women are able to excel so much yeah. faster than black men, um, a lot of that we feel like we could already do like in and most of us can mm-hmm. already do that you know mm-hmm. so i think that what we um look for is the ability to really be understood yeah i think that's um that's probably the the reason why there it's you know argument a lot a lot of arguments start or misunderstandings or disagreements is lack of understanding Mm-hmm. lack of understanding and and feeling heard you know and right. in order and to in heard. order to have felt heard the other person has to understand you right so i think what it really is 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 really just being heard right feeling feeling heard right you and you that could me? probably goes for for both parties because like i know for me and you know probably most guys like there's a lot of times like you don't necessarily want to bring up conversation because you just don't feel like dealing with the argument or you don't feel like mm-hmm. dealing with the you know i'm just not going to say nothing you know what i'm saying so, and, and I guess that's a, um, and that's that safety a, though. That's safety, yeah, right. That's yeah. a place of, of feeling safety yeah. where you just feel yeah. like, you know, I just don't feel like dealing with it. So I'm just going to continue on feeling the way I feel, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and not say anything about it, you know? So it's mm-hmm. like, we have, we, we both want the same things. Yeah. We just have different ways of needing to get there. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. And I, I think that's, I think that's important. Right. I think too, uh, in this space where we, we see black women 
excelling and doing great, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times, black men feel left out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because now, I think I really think this is a systematic thing. I think this is a is a, is a slavery type of type of type of type of thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think it's the destruction of the black family. You know, so I think all of that plays its part, right? So I think um, with that being said, you know, um, I think when you leave men out, they they're they're either non-responsive or they're over aggressive. You know what I mean? There's no middle ground. <laughs> you know what I mean? So so I think our this American system has breeded, you know what I mean, like a bipolar type of black per- black man. You know what I mean? And who has it left to fend for themselves is the black woman. Then that causes them to excel. I mean, the, the, you just have the resilience in you to excel. And now, uh, now even more, I feel like black men do, they just feel left out. You know what I mean? I was talking to my pops uh, yesterday and I was just thinking, right? I was saying um, what we have to do for, for black men is teach them. Um, you're not going to, re- like the truth of the matter is you're not going to be celebrated. You know what I mean? Because when we look at the, the, the black men that are celebrated, they, over, they, they have to overperform, they have to be super talented, um, or it's, uh, it's just like, you, you, you have to be abnormal, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but, a regular human being like, like, yeah, like everybody else. Yeah, but, but in this American society, what we yeah. respect is, but, but, people, but you can be respected, right? You could you could be respected by your work ethic and your and your ownership. You know what I mean. When when we're able to own, you know what I mean. Like you, you just bought a, a home. You own you own your property. You own a business. You know what I mean. You build a, a level of respect. You know what I mean. Um, so uh, while our black women are killing it on all levels and they're being celebrated, we have to be a part of that celebration. Yeah. You know what I mean, but we we don't want to compete with that. That's not that's not our job to compete with our. The, I so for me, a lot of the jobs and opportunities I had was because of black women because they was in a space. <laughs> you know what I mean. So we have to leverage what it is that we have. So if it's a bunch of black women getting into corporate, you know, space, cool. I celebrate that mm-hmm. now. How can we move together? You know what I mean? I celebrate it. I respect it. Now, now is our time to work, work hard, re- celebrate our women, you know what I mean? Be as supportive as possible. But then we could be that, we don't have to be on the front line, you know what I mean? But we could, we could still be, play a major role in what it is that's needed for our family. And we could still lead. We don't have to be the, we, we could, there's a book talking about leading from behind or, you know what I mean? Yep. You don't have to, there's different ways of leading. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, and I think, I think that's another big one in the black community too. Like we feel like we have to be on the forefront. We gotta be in, in front of the camera, you know, and, and have all of the, um, I guess, attention to, to, to see that we're leading or to feel like we're leading. And, yeah. and, and, and like you said, leading can look like so many different things. You could, you, you can create, uh, create an atmosphere that's conducive for creativity in your household, you know, mm-hmm. and for people to feel safe, to express themselves and to go after their dreams and their goals. And um, not really that that's a form of leadership, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. creating that culture within your own household. Or it could be on the front lines, or it could be, you know, it, it, it takes so many different forms, but sometimes we just get so caught up on one one type of, of form of, of leadership. Yeah, I yeah. think I have, we have a, a, um, a perfect example of that mm-hmm. with um, mm-hmm. Tisha Talks, which mm-hmm. is like kind of has me in the front. But I know a lot of people have like made assumptions that like, like I've just done it by myself when 
like Akita came out with the name. Mm -hmm. Akita will work on like the marketing and the the, the strategy, mm -hmm. like really editing. Every, and... Yeah, like a, a lot of things, yeah. and it really. But what it also does is it makes him my safety net. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you can very well like lead and and do that. And even though what people may see is you know the image of me, it is because all of this back here is like cushioned and taken care of mm -hmm. and, re you know, reliable and understand, you know what I'm saying? All those things are happening mm -hmm. yeah. in the background to allow me to move in that particular space. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that is, um, yeah, that's just like, a, I think a good, ex the first example yeah. that I think of. Yeah. And you, you got to be secure in yourself, you know, as a man. To, yeah, to be able yeah. to to be okay with that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's 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 the same thing. Going back to what safety, like you know what right. I mean? Yeah. Like you have to like that that security comes, and and I think that's that's a that's another part. You know what I mean? Um, that comes with self awareness, as you understand. Like so, for instance, that like when I when I talk about trust, right? Um, it could help happen in relationships with other people, but a lot of times it's tough to be with a partner who doesn't trust themselves. You know what I mean? If, you know, who, who is not grateful about, you know, waking up or who they are, you know what I mean? They're not reliable in their day-to-day -day life. They don't understand who they are. They're not, there's no safety in, in them, you know what I mean? And right. then how can they come to a, a space of, of transparency and truth Right. if that's not how they operate on a day-to-day -day with themselves mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so when there's cracks in that you know what i mean and i'm not saying cracks but uh yeah well i am saying cracks if there's cracks in that but the person isn't trying to work on that then it makes it tough you know what i mean for you to trust somebody or to get to a space of a, a, a place of truth you know what i mean and yeah. then that security it's going to be that that's when that insecurity comes comes up this has been a great conversation yeah yeah <laughs> thank I mean, you thank you tell our listeners and mm -hmm. our viewers actually um about your book that's coming up and yeah your podcast. Plug, plug away man yes. plug away all the stuff you got <laughs> on, talk about it how can they reach you how can they find you all that good stuff okay um you can reach me at on instagram at mr mr al hardy um, I have a website, www.mralhardy.com. Um, I sell apparel. If you can see this, this is one of my, one of my favorite shirts. This is called Reclaiming My, my Peace. So I have, nice. reclaiming my, I have Reclaiming My Love, Reclaiming My Value, Reclaiming My Peace. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the ones that everybody love is the Black Men Are Dope, Black Women Are Dope, mm -hmm. Black Love Is Dope. And the reason I created that was so so we could have these type of conversations, yeah. you know what I mean, where black people, black men and black women could, could talk about being a man, being a woman, not talking at each other, but talking to each other and really empowering each other without even saying it, you know what I mean? So it's really sparking a seed to empower one another. Um, and then uh, I have a book that's going to be coming out. It's called... Uh, it's called Jack of All Trades, but Master of One. Um, mm. And it's really about how do you master yourself? I, at, at times, I, I felt people were saying I was a Jack of All Trades. Um, and, and that's the, the truth of the matter is, is when you're talented and you have gifts, you don't know how to, how to, how to use them and when to use them. Mm. Um, so, it, so this book is really just going to help you be more self-reflective. Um, just help you understanding focus, discipline. So we're going to be talking about uh, how to get to your mission, understanding that um, your name is, is, is a powerful piece when you're talking about the, uh, the power of your name. Um, my name is, my full name is Alpha Quan Addison Cornelius Hardy. And, but in the midst of that, <laughs> <laughs> in the midst of that, uh, and I say that, you know, um, my 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 first name speaks to my destiny my middle name speaks to my history and my last name speaks to my legacy and so my first name is it means one who discerns true or false 
and Addison Cornelius is my father and my grandfather's name, and that's my history. And then my last name, you know, your last name is really about your legacy. Um, so, uh, so you know, so we, we, we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to get into the trust, uh, talking about trust. So hopefully it's just a good book. It's, uh, it's, it's targeted for, for our young men because mm-hmm. a lot of times, you know, we don't have materials. We don't have tools out there for the brothers. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's tangible. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and, and the, the thing is, is that sisters, you know, you have tools, you have friends, you have networks, you have all of this stuff. And then, like, for instance, you have women who's going, they, they, let's, let's just say you have a man and a, and a, young, a young man and a young lady, 17 years old, they're going to college, right? And they have support for this young lady. So she goes, she graduates, she gets a master's. And what I've been seeing is a lot of these young men, they don't have the tools going into college. Mm-hmm. So two semesters in, two years in, they're coming back home. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So now, while these sisters graduating, you know what I mean, let's just say five, six years down the road, this young man, by that time, he's trying to figure out, you know, those four or five years, he's trying to figure out what he's trying to do. So mm-hmm. Master One is trying to help you you know, to stay focused, mm-hmm. understand the seasons mm-hmm. so you can get to the next next level. You know what I mean? Because we got we to gotta get this thing together as black men. Yeah. 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 There's so many distractions out there. And I, I think this yeah. will help the, that young man to stay focused. And like you said, writing it down, knowing what's your mission, making it plain, and, and really just get a, a clear direction. For them so i can't yeah. wait for it i know we um, gotta have you back i know it's on. gonna be good yeah when you when yeah. you release the book uh we gotta have you back on the show um i think that'll be powerful i just want to say because i know we've known each other for a long long time yeah um, yeah yeah you, you yeah, see man. the growth bro yeah 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 <laughs> listen man I'm, I'm proud of you bro just just to see where you've come until now and just keep doing your thing man we we're watching you and we, we support you all the way so thank you thank you i i, I truly appreciate it Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. And we'll, we'll talk. Thank you.